Hello and welcome to Sedimentology 101 from Petroleum Engineers. We are Group 11. My name is Fook and I, along with Aaron and Alista, will discuss with you guys about irregular stratification and flame structures. But first, I want us to remind about the regular stuff first, meaning you guys all know about this, right? This is the regular stratification, starting off with those lame horizontal laminations or beddings and which can consist of maybe this is a mud layer and above that it can be a sandstone and also we have ripples and dunes that we all know the shape and size of them so that's a ripples and the dunes is just like a it has like a higher amplitude so these two are ripples and dunes i think that's enough for the regular stuff now we can talk about the more exciting part which is the irregular stratification so convoluted beddings i'm pretty sure that you guys are wondering like oh how does it look like well it's just it start off with a regular layers which are kind of horizontal and then we have some kind of randomly shaped layer which has random directions and flame structures is just like like a special type of convenient paintings and it has like a flame like ripples which is like so it can form in the same direction or in a opposite direction and please note that they, we will have the horizontal layers sandwich those two structures and that's it for how it looks like and I will move on to Aaron to talk about the mechanism of these two structures Right, so Convoluted beddings are formed when plastic deformation of unlithified depositional layer occurs. So when a large depositional event occurs, for example, a turbidity flow, that large and voluminous flow drags you know, an unlithified sediment and deforms it plastically along its flow axes. So for example, we've got an unlithified layer here, and then comes along a turbidity flow, for example. It comes really quickly and at a large rate of volume and as a result it causes shear forces and viscous forces here and as a result this drags the the, the, the unlithified layer and you get something like this you get folding of the unlithified layer and uh, this folding is known as a convolute bedding because well, it's convoluted as you can see this happens because the viscous forces are in the flow direction and as a result the axes of the flow are also in that direction and when the flow stops you get um, a deposition layer on the top that seems to be undisturbed as well as you know, the original already lithified thing so it's sandwiched between those two that's for convolute biddings now for flame structures it's also due to there being a unlithified silty sand or mud that, that has been previously deposited so we've got but instead of that instead of a, a plastic deformation it's because of the sudden loading suddenly causes a overpressure in the pores so we've got this unlithified grains with plenty of pore water in between them all the pore water and when there is a large depositional event that occurs very suddenly, it loads this thing and pushes these grains down, compacts them, resulting in an overpressure in the pores, and this forces water out of the pores and into the layer that, was, that has been deposited on top of it, and it's loading it, so into this thing here. So as a result, uh, when the pore water shoots into the top layer, it also drags along with it a lot of the sediment that uh, was in it because you know usually it's a silty kind of sand or it's a clay. 
And uh, as a result, we get these flame-like structures that are you know, kind of pointy and that go into the top layer. So these fingers, as we call them, are due to pour water going into this layer that was deposited on top and dragging material from here up with it. So that's how flame structures and convolute buildings are formed. I'll now hand it over to Alistair to tell us where they are formed. With flame structures and convoluted beddings, they don't have any partic one particular deposition of environment that they form at. They can form at a variety of um, environments, such as shallow marine, deep marine, fill tank environments, fluvial channels, and sometimes even aeolian conditions. So, because the deposition of environment isn't a main factor, the main factor that we need to look at is the, the rate of sediment, um, rate of sediment supply. So what we need is a sudden and rapid influx of sediments to, to be deposited on the unlithified and, unlithified and saturated sediments so these structures can form. So the main, so the our best example I can think of is a turbidite on the um, deep ocean floor. So that concludes our presentation and thank you for watching.